So delighted to welcome to the Hendon FC YouTube channel, non-league legend, Tony Incenzo. Welcome. Yeah, great to talk to you, lads. Um, going back to my youth, I was a big Hendon supporter, so I'm sure we'll unearth some, some great memories today. So we're, we're a similar age. I'm, I think, slightly older than you. Um, what was your involvement? How did your Hendon, involvement with Hendon all begin? Well, I grew up in Golders Green in Temple Fortune, uh, Bridge Lane. And I went to Garden Suburb Primary School. And my best friend at school was a guy called Jonathan Chipek, who uh, he went on to be a really good Maccabi footballer. And um, we obviously used to sit together in the class and used to talk about football we used to watch on TV. And then we decided we wanted to go and watch local football. It was 1973 when I first started going every Saturday. I supported QPR and I supported Hendon. So I'd go to Queen's Park Rangers one week and I'd go to Hendon on the other Saturdays. And it was a great time. It was the, 1973 was the end of the old amateur era. Hendon had one of the best sides in the country, great players, John Swannell, Rod Hader, Alan Phillips, and so on, Kieran Summers, great times playing Newcastle in the FA Cup, getting a draw at St. James's Park, bringing them back to Watford. Great, great times. It was um, a really safe environment as well, because in the 1970s, the professional game was blighted by hooliganism, you could get beaten up at a, a, a top-flight game in London, and uh, non-league was 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 safe. Um, Johnny's mum or my mum would drop us off at the turnstiles at Clement Road at ten to three on a Saturday. We'd pay our few pennies to get in. We'd congregate round the program shop. Uh, that was part of the match day experience when you were a kid was to go to the program shop at Hendon. It was run by a really enthusiastic guy called Malcolm Graves, who also used to bring a bugle to games and, and get all the fans in. Yeah. And we'd all stand there and congregate and swap programmes and buy programmes. And then we'd cheer Hendon on from the cover terracing on the far side, the popular side. We hadn't got enough money to uh, pay to transfer into the stand. We were only kids. And then if you had a few pennies left over, you'd get a sausage roll or a coffee from behind the goal, the tea hut behind the goal on the big terracing. And it, it were just great times. It, it, you know, I can still remember running around the side of the pitch, smelling the liniment of the players, you know, Bobby Charles on the wing and so on. Uh, it, it was great. And I can remember one time with Johnny, um, we used to run up and down all through the game to keep warm. And we used to try and catch the ball when it was kicked out of play. And we'd have a little competition to see who could touch the ball the most. And uh, there was one game uh, on a Saturday. It was freezing cold. We were running up and down. And it, we would keep a tally. So I'm 2-1 up, Johnny. No, you're 3-2 ahead. And it got to the last minute. I think we were drawing 6-6 six, six or 7-7. Seven, seven. And I saw the ball bobbling over towards the touchline. So I ducked under the perimeter barrier and just ran to the side of the pitch, and I kicked the ball right across the pitch. To, you know, it, I thought it had gone out of play, but it hadn't. And I could hear people behind me saying, get off the pitch, get off the pitch. And I played this expert 40-yard pass to John Swannell in the end of the penalty area. The referee looked around, didn't know what to do, and he just waved play on. So I actually played <laughs> a 40-yard pass during an Isthmian League fixture at Hendon. But great, great times going to Claremont Road. Is there any particular games from, from that time that, um, that, that you were there for that really stand out for you? It was an amazing FA Cup fourth round qualifying tie against Billericay. And Billericay had um, won the FA Vars, I think, three years running. And they were, they brought a huge travelling support over to Claremont Road, or about six or 700 Billericay fans under the, the popular side cover and uh, on the park side. And um, Hendon won 3-2. It was amazing to get to the first round of the FA Cup was the, the sort of pinnacle of, of what you wanted to achieve as a non-league club in those days. There were other games as well. I remember going back in later years, Hendon reached the Middlesex Charity Cup Final, the Russell Grant Charity Cup Final against Wembley. Uh, I think that was in 1988, and uh, we won 2-0. I can remember uh, Ian Dowie and Dermot Drummy story. Uh, you know, two players who went on to have great careers at a higher level. Uh, just fantastic times. I mean, the old amateur days as well. You knew all the away players because amateur footballers and amateur internationals were really well known. So, for example, when you played Leatherhead and the Leatherhead lit Chris Kelly came down, all the fans would be giving him a bit of stick and he'd start arguing back in good natured fashion from the centre circle. Uh, so just just great times. And then the fans would all mix together. The away fans were always very friendly. You'd change ends at half time, walk past the, the away fans. And it was just, just a really good, wholesome friendly atmosphere for a, a 10, 11, 12 year old boy like me. So your devotion to QPR kind of, I guess, then kind of took over and you, and you meet your extensive media work. Um, you're telling me you've done 51 years watching QPR, never missed a home game. It's literally unbelievable. 
Yeah, it's it's just something that I've continued to do, and I've been lucky with health and so on. The only time I thought I was going to miss a game was when the COVID struck, and football was going to be behind closed doors. And I wasn't sure for a while whether members of the media were going to be allowed into the stadium. So I had a contingency plan to make sure I didn't miss a QPR home game. It involved either hiring a helicopter to float over the pitch while the match was going on, or a hot air balloon, or the cheapest option would have been to get a cherry picker and get it into one of the gardens next to the ground and then look over the uh, over the back of the stands. But in the end, the media people were allowed it, and I managed to keep going. Um, so QPR is my devotion, but non-league is, is my passion as well. I've been to more than 2,500 grounds now. And the ground hopping started really because of Hendon supporters, because initially I was going to Hendon home games and then I decided to go to some away games on the Hendon Supporters Club coach. It was run by a guy called Mike, I think he was really enthusiastic. And some of the guys like yourself, Steve, used to sit on the back seats of the coach, David Bolheimer as well. And you all used to talk about other clubs and other grounds and non-league football. And I used to sit a couple of seats from the back and sort of eavesdrop on this conversation and um, I, it just developed my interest. And it occurred to me that non-league football supporters like every other aspect of non-league football and follow the whole of the non-league scene. And I think that's why the non-league paper is so successful, because it covers every aspect. So there might be something going on at Enfield or Staines or Slough, a, a, a fundraising idea or whatever that will help Hendon. So that's why people follow everything. As a Queen's Park Rangers supporter, I'm not interested in what's going on at Brentford or Fulham, but I am interested as a non-league supporter, in everything that's going on up and down the country on the non-league scene. So you came to Silver Jubilee Park uh, to watch us play Eastbourne in the FA Trophy. When, was that your first time there, or how many times have you been there in the recent times? Well, I've been to Silver Jubilee Park a number of times as a kid because Kingsbury Town played there. But yes, I came back because um, I worked for Asusu, the um, FA Trophy sponsors, as a, a roaming reporter. And when they said, can you pick out uh, an FA Trophy game to cover? Obviously, I wanted to cover Hendon because it was my club as a kid. So we went back and it was a really, really good game. I mean, Hendon dominated, you know, we're underdogs against uh, higher opposition, but dominated that game, scored two really good goals, really exciting game, good atmosphere, saw some good old faces that I recognised in the crowd. And it was a totally different experience to play on road, a community experience. It's a good 3G setup, plenty of cover. Some of the old terracing is there still. Uh, the old Kingsbury Town stand has been re refurbished. There was a club shop. I noticed that your club shop now, you just give the programmes away, um, whereas in the old days they were sold. Um, but it's good to keep that aspect going. The green and white colours are still there. The come on, Endon chance, which it, it, that really resonated with me. Come on, Endon! Because I grew up in Golders Green, quite a middle-class area, going to a, a middle-class primary school at Garden Suburb. But... To fit in when I went to Hendon as a kid with Johnny, we developed this fake Cockney accent so we could shout, come on, Hendon, and join in with everybody that was uh, that was watching the football. So lovely to go back to Silver Jubilee Park. Uh, it's it's great that Hendon have settled just a couple of miles away from Claremont Road. And I think the crowds are still very similar to what used to be achieved in the in the latter days at Claremont Road. So. I love Claremont Road, but, but football's moved on now. And these 3G community hubs, are, I think, are the way forward. And I think in 20, 30 years' time, every non-league club to a certain standard will be playing on 3G. So you saw us beat Eastbourne. After Eastbourne, we beat Weymouth. Then we went to Boundary Park and beat Oldham. Prediction for when we face Wealdstone? Well, I'm hoping to um, bring the Azusa cameras back for that, that game. That we're, we're trying to set it up at the moment. And uh, Wheelstone, I can remember then, back in the day, uh, winning the, the non-league double, the Alliance Premier League and, and the, the FA Trophy in the same season. Um, the Alliance clubs, now National League clubs, I think they used to take the trophy a lot more seriously in those days. And then Wheelstone, of course, they lost the old Lower Mead Stadium and they were nomadic for a long, long time, about 18, 20 years. But their fans, very much like the Hendon fans, kept things going, traditional old school support. Uh, they just had a change of manager. And I'm just wondering how um, important they'll, they'll stake the FA Trophy in this season at the moment. I'm thinking Hendon will go there and bring a good travelling support and Hendon, Hendon will win that game. I hope you're right. Tony, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, thank you for your time. The reminiscent thing is just, is just brilliant. And we'll see you at uh, we'll see you in Ricelip in a couple of Saturdays. All the best.